يعني this phenomenon, this phenomenon of antigen receptor gene rearrangement is a very strange, very unique phenomenon that only happens in a population of cells in a, in a certain region of the DNA. Before I start anything, I want to remind you the major reason for mitosis, identical daughter cells. Shall you mitosis? But continue the sentence. Identical daughter cells on the genetic level. Bimana, if you sequence the two daughter cells that were made through mitosis, and if you compare their DNA sequence against each other, and against the parental DNA, the sequence will be exactly identical. Nevertheless, if you look at cytoplasm of the daughter cells, it won't be identical. And when cytokinesis happened, the cytoplasm itself is not homogeneously distributed in the cell. So really, mitosis is identical daughter cells on the genetic level. The other point I want to start with before we dig into the details, in all of our body cells, except the legs and sperms, are genetically identical. And if you sequence your liver cell, or your skin, or your even hematopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow, the DNA will be exactly the same. Even though all of our body cells, they have the same DNA, not all of the DNA in all of the cells is transcribed and translated, right? Rather, we start a selection of genes to be expressed in a certain organ or a certain tissue, depending on the need of that organ or that tissue for that protein. And for instance, methyl basit. Uh, there is a protein called the crystalline. Crystalline, I mean crystal. A gene exists in all of the cells, in all of our body cells, the same DNA we said. Though, if you look at a crystalline protein in your liver, it's not expressed. There is no protein crystalline. The gene is there, but it's not transcribed and not translated. If you look at a gene crystalline in the lens of your eye, it is expressed there. And the other way around, if you choose a protein called albumin, Albumin is needed by the liver cells, by the hepatocytes, but not required by the lens of the eye, even though both population of cells, they carry the albumin gene. With that refreshment in the back of your mind, let's start talking about lymphoid cells that are produced through mitosis in the bone marrow from hematopoietic stem cells. They undergo mitosis, and during the divisions of hematopoietic stem cells, immature B and T cells will eventually be made, will be differentiated, صح? ببلش. Remember, the bone marrow is a heterogeneous population of cells, and osteoblasts, osteoclasts, mesenchymal stem cells, and hematopoietic stem cells. Now, the hematopoietic stem cells are de-differentiated. Well, structure dictates the function. يعني ما لهم structure distinct. The neuron, you can easily tell how the neuron, right? And once the cell is differentiated, it no longer, oh, yeah, the division rate becomes very minimal. So, back to our point. From this population of cells in the bone marrow, hematopoietic stem cells will undergo rounds of mitotic divisions. Consequently, in the progenitor cells, the precursor cells for lymphocytes, through induction, they will become differentiated into B or T cells, specifically immature B and T cells. And they leave the bone marrow with a maturation down the road. What I want to talk about in, on the genetic level, the unique phenomena that's happening in this process, process of division, mitotic division, of hematopoietic stem cells giving rise to lymphocytes, BOT cells. Now, the antibody, this is how the antibody looks like, given when you had your midterm exam, I hope you know, you know what an antibody is, at least, meditim, you know. Since it's a protein, it's encoded by a DNA, by a gene. And the light chain is encoded by those DNA segments, or those genes, call them whatever you want. And the heavy chain is encoded by those genes. They're located in the chromosomes of our cell. Now, there is two parts for the light and the heavy chain. The variable region will constant region. The constant region is the blue part, either in the, uh, in the heavy or the light chain. The whole way encoded by C, let me zoom in. I want to zoom in here. The blue part, C, encodes for the constant region for the light and heavy chain, respectively, 
depicted al DNA hon. There are other regions called VDG. V stands for variable region, D stands for diversity, and J stands for joining. Notice a light chain does have V and D, but it's missing the J segment of the variable region. يعني هدول التلاتة, those three, they make the variable region of the heavy chain. With those two, they make a variable region of the light chain. And the blue, they will be translated into the constant regions of the heavy and the light chain. Straightforward. Nothing complicated. All right. Probably you know, intuitively, you know, there are millions of different immunoglobulins, millions of different T cell receptors. If each immunoglobulin, if each antibody is encoded by a gene, then you're talking about millions of genes encoding for those different proteins. Though we have only 22,000 protein coding genes as humans. Through alternative splicing, يعني على RNA level, skipping exons, you can make 100,000 different proteins from 20,000 different genes. But now in this scenario, we're not talking about 100,000 different proteins in all of our body cells. We're talking about b millions and billions of different proteins only in our immune cells, only in B and T lymphocytes. So where are they encoded? What genes are making those different proteins? Well, the answer, there are no genes encoding single gene, single protein approach here. Rather, we have a very strange phenomenon that is very unique to those genes that encode the antibodies or T cell receptors. And this phenomenon that evolved بشكل very crazy is called somatic recombination or somatic rearrangement. So let's look together and what's happening. The hematopoietic stem cell, uh, I'll call it lymphocyte precursor cell, grandfather of the immature BNT cell. So what happens? Randomly, during the mitosis, the DNA is being changed, which should not happen. This is very abnormal. Yani DNA is sacred. You never, you never play a mess with the DNA. So one segment from each group is being randomly selected, and it will appear in the daughter cells on the DNA level. So the V segment, D segment, J segment, and then the constant region. Later on, this DNA will be transcribed by immature B cell, for instance, my heavy chain, will be transcribed into pre-mRNA, mRNA B cell processing, removal of introns, and translated into the heavy chain of immunoglobulin. This is called pre-antigen. So as a matter of fact, before the appearance in the bone marrow of the final lymphocyte, the immature B or T cell, a precursor cell will show up that will be carrying only the heavy chain. Following that, the light chain will be synthesized. On the genetic level, on the DNA level, this is the DNA that is responsible for synthesizing a variable region of the heavy chain, VDG. And this is the DNA that is involved in synthesizing a variable region of the light chain. For simplicity, C constant regions are not shown. So if you look at all of your body cells, from your heart to your eyes to your hematopoietic stem cells, the DNA will look like this. Though, if you look at the DNA in your mature or even immature B and T cells, this region will be different. DNA got changed through a process we called it somatic recombination, which we will discuss in a minute in details. So two somatic recombinations are occurring. One on the heavy chain level, followed by another somatic recombination for the light chain variable region. Let's look at DNA, for instance, for the immunoglobulin heavy chain gene, which exists, by the way, on chromosome 14, QR, long arm of chromosome 14 in this region. You have the constant, the gene that's responsible for the constant region, Next to it is the J segments, 
بعدين ال two parallel lines mean very far away بعيد كتير عندي ال diversity segments in number of times many 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 of them very very far away ال V segments هذا على الدينة level We're, we are at the DNA level. Now let's dig into the semantic recombination. So this is what we just talked about in a minute. Sorry, I know the soil is here. Yeah? Just when I zoom in, I lose the pointer. Nevertheless, even if I lose the pointer, look at the top line from right to left. We have the constant region, C mu. Mu stands for the constant region that will be translated to the IgM. The other constant regions for class switching, they have other constant regions. Next to it, not far away, Anna, the J segments, and we said very far away, the D, or further far away is the V segments. So the first thing that should happen, in those veins, you want to make an RNA, an RNA transcribe, before, before that, on the DNA level, during the mitotic divisions, as the hematopoietic stem cell, or the progenitor cell, undergoing mitosis. On the DNA level, L D segments need to get closer to the J. So somatic recombination that encompass cutting pieces between L D and J, throwing them away, or joining them together occurs. Had is D J rearrangement. So in simple language with Arabi, Ana Bain L J Bain D Masaf Tirabili. So Baru I cut the Masaf L Bain Why even I cut pieces from the D and J? Now I have the D and J close to each other, as you can see here. And this is known as DJ rearrangement. Next, as you can think, similar scenario happens where the far, far away V segments undergo somatic recombination called VDJ rearrangement, where the region between the V and the D is deleted, removed on the DNA level. Eventually, you will have a daughter cell that will have 1V, 1D, 1J of a certain B lymphocyte. And this defies the definition of mitosis. And a progenitor cell undergoing mitotic divisions, or my daughter cell, a mature B cell or a mature T cell, is missing part of the DNA. So where is the identical daughter cells concept? Well, this is an exception. And this only happens with bone marrow for the hematopoietic stem cells. طبعا then the RNA, the interferons are spliced out or exported with the mRNA in the cytosol will be translated to mature immune heavy chain. Let's look at this concept from a different angle. خلينا نطلع الفكرة هاي نفس الفكرة ما بدي أطرح فكرة تانية. Let's go over it again. So we have the segments of VDJ for the heavy chain, the constant tone. بعدين First happens something called somatic recombination for uh, D, right? DJ recombination, where this region is deleted, hey, huh? removed. Well, those two are combined together, giving rise to this piece of DNA, the daughter cells. And then another recombination happens to bring together V towards a rest of the segments, removal of a piece of a DNA. Under a process called somatic recombination or somatic rearrangement, call it a bit huh? Eventually, you have a piece of DNA with one V, one D, and one J, and a constant region. But then, heavy chain gene, I'm not a human, and around 40 V segments, 23 uh, D, and 1 to 6 J segments. What I want you to understand so you have, let's say, 40 different variable segments, and you will choose one of them, and you will choose one of the D and one of the J which will be combined with a C. And I will leave the math for you to decide to do the math to come up with how many different combinations are possible on DNA level, right? Millions of possibilities, giving rise to millions of different variable regions. Let's look here again. So we were talking about the heavy chain, and you we were saying, you know, through a process we defined, the here. Basically, arrangement process, somatic recombination. Uh, DNA will be changed by region that is involved with Ig heavy chain. And the same story, the good news, and the same story occurs for the light chain. 
نفس الكونسبت اوف سوماتيك ريكومبينيشن اكسبت انه ذير از نو دي سيجمنتس باللايت تشين از يو كان سي هير طبعا لايت تشينز ان كابا اند وي هاف اولسو لامدا اي وونت يو تو سي هير انه الريد الريد بارت كورسبونس تو ذا في ريجن في سيجمنتس the green and blue correspond to the dng so this is exactly where they exist in the variable region of the immunoglobulin let's talk about somatic recombination for the light chain we were talking about the heavy chain we just said in the light chain goes through similar processes right بحيث انه vj recombination to bring the v close to the cnrg but then rna is being transcribed translated on the horn a segment of the light chain that will be joined on heavy chain that already exists on the surface of the precursor lymphocyte. This is a nice representation of what happens. So horn, it shows germline DNA. A shiny germline DNA. Yani all of the cells in our body, they have this DNA. The combined DNA, how a unique DNA that changed only موجود the lymphocytes, through somatic recombination. How can I know? Can you look here? Only one V and one J and one C, the light chain, high light chain, are selected through somatic recombination, driven by promoter expressing an RNA for the light chain, right? I see J and V. Sometimes we could another segment, the precursor of the immature lymphocyte, But the promoter tabaha is not green, is not expressing that certain segment. But let's look at odds. Let's look at odds together. Nothing new here, just discussion. A germline DNA through a heavy chain, somatic Why? How did I know a heavy chain in the sura? Because it has this segment. So this is the DNA through somatic recombinations. So what happens really during the mitotic divisions of the hematopoietic precursor cell? giving rise to the immature lymphocyte, B or T cell. And we're discussing B cell. We said T cell, the same story. Instead of heavy light chain and alpha or beta chains, right? So look here. You can choose in one B lymphocyte, the genetic material for the heavy chain, we will V1, D1, J1. The other B cell lymphocyte, well, they have VDJ with different segments, with different sequence. V2, D3, J5. A third lymphocyte of the immature B cell, Mahde, Cert V, Msharf 10, D2, J2, methanol, and so on. So, a number of combinations is astronomical, giving rise to different variable regions. I want to hint into something. And there is also something called hypervariable regions that we will go over in a minute. Khalia Balkum. Real variable. So here is the antibody, and you can see here VDJ and the heavy chains, and only V and J and the light chains, and the gray dashed lines, so all the gray lines, three of them, the heavy chain and the, the exist on, one, two, and three. With the light chain, you can see them also in the variable region. Those gray boxes are the gray line, homo hyper variable regions. Before the talking about that, let's talk at the end. Since we're talking about the heavy light chains, where is the DNA for those in your cells? Well, the heavy chain locus is at chromosome number 14. And the LV, very far away D, very far away J, and different constant regions related to the class switching. If you're talking about immunoglobulin M that appears first, are they encoded by constant new? Class switching, if you want to switch to another constant region, You don't express this, rather you express other ones. Straightforward. The kappa light chain locus is on chromosome 2. Will lambda chromosome 22. And that's all what you need to know. The rest of the numbers, don't memorize them. 14 to 22. And if you want to contrast, if you want to compare uh, heavy and light chain against each other, we can see them here. You can see germline DNA on A panel who are the heavy chain will be panel who will cap a light chain, for example. Notice in the uh, germline who are uh, the top line موجود in all of our body cells. Uh, during the mitosis, the bone marrow rearranged DNA through somatic recombination occurs. The heavy chain two steps, D to J joining, 
and then V will join the DJ, so we call it VDJ joining or VDJ recombination, call it whatever you want. On the right side, an equivalent process that occurs with light chain only VJ joining. By then, the RNA is being transcribed and processed into messenger RNA, which will be translated into protein. Had the protein in L will be cleaved, leader fragment high will be cleaved, and the protein will undergo primary, secondary, tertiary modifications with post translational modifications and glycosylation of error. Eventually, we'll have the heavy and the light chain. Now, let's talk about something I mentioned briefly before the hypervariable region. The hypervariable region, which is also known as complementarity determining region, CDRs, if you compare the antibodies, the immunoglobulins, and if you collect the immunoglobulins from your body, and if you compare them against each other, there, there won't be much difference. There won't be much difference in the constant region, صح? The real difference will be in the variable region, due to somatic recombination we discussed. There are three regions in three regions, which are CDR1, 2, and 3, and heavy or light chain. These regions, we call them hypervariable regions. So if you look at the curve here, for both, on the y-axis is the variability, on the x-axis is the residual position, or the amino acid position, of the variable region. You can see there is a hypervariability. There are three spikes, three signals, known as the hypervariable regions, bell light and the heavy chain represented on. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So what's the story of those hypervariable regions? Well, to understand that concept, we need to take a step back. Let's zoom in on the region high, the immunoglobulin region, and the VDJ, V. DJ, we talked about them, but there is other DNA sequences between the V and the DJ, of which something called RSS, which stands for recombination signal sequence. Is any recombination signal sequence from the name signal sequence sequence DNA sequence involved with recombination, and it's giving a signal. What is the RSS made of? Well, it's made of a heptamer. Then seven nucleotides, a nanomer, nine nucleotides, and in between them there is a spacer DNA. The spacer DNA between the heptamer and the nanomer is either 12 base pair spacer or 23 base pair spacers. This RSS. This RSS sequence is attached to the segments, the VDJ segments. Any questions so far? If you haven't understood the RSS. إيش معمولي؟ تفضل. RSS هو sequence of DNA موجود exists between the segments. What is it? It is هذا ال RSS هو seven nucleotides and nine nucleotides heptamer and nanomer between them either twelve base pairs or twenty three base pairs. As simple as that. لا 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 this this exists at germline level. بالهيماتوبوتيك ستيم سيل ليفل بيفور الريكومبينيشن ال ار اس اس موتيف او او ريجن هذا ال ار اس اس ات فولوز ا رول كولد 2312 رول 2312 نيوكليوتايد مش حكينا انه وي جاست سيد ان ذير 12 اند 23 سبيسر دي ان ايز بتوين الهبتامر والنانومر ناو ليت مي زوم ان هير ليت مي زوم ان هير اف يو لوك فور ذيس سبيسيفيك اكزامبل ذوس Three V regions joined to them the RSS. How many nucleotides the space of the RSS for the V regions? Twelve. Number twelve, you know. Now for the J, for those two J segments, the RSS spacer DNA is how much? Twenty-three. Now here is the rule. Rule is simple. Twenty-three, twelve rule. What is saying? In no somatic recombination, it doesn't happen between twelve and twelve. Nor it happens between 23 and 23. Rather, somatic recombination occurs between 12 and 23. We don't have to memorize it. It's common sense. And you don't care about the V recombining my V. You want the V to recombine my J. That's why the J will have this J segments will have the same number of RSS motifs. Will V segments will have the same number of RSS motifs. In this example here, 12 are with the V, 
and 23 are with the J. Let's look again at this example with the same idea. 23, 12 rule. Hon, how many variable segments we have? Two. Will RSS motif attached to them is how many base pairs? 23. I have written 23. The J on the right side, the upper right, is 12. So recombination will happen between one of those two Vs with the J. But it will not happen between V and V, and no, it should follow 2312 rule. So how does the somatic recombination happen? Well, if you look here, 23 aligns closer to the 12, parallel to each other, forming a loop, hairpin loop. Afterwards, a special protein called RAG, special enzyme, will break the double-stranded DNA on the V and the double-stranded DNA on the G. Consequently, V will J will join together, combined with each other, will loop between them, will go away. It will be deleted, it will be lost. So that's how somatic recombination happens. Let's look at it again here. So in this scenario here, we have 12 base pairs at the RSS of LV, or 23 base pairs at the RSS motif of the J. According to the 12-23 rule, they will align the shekel parallel, forming a loop, had a loop and enzyme, we called it H, RAG, will cut it, and though V and the J, they will be joined together, what's in between them will be deleted. And this is one of the two mechanisms for somatic recombination. What we just talked about, the hairpin loop configuration, which is also known as a deletion. Lash deletion, and this part is deleted, or it disappears. Again, this example, showing if an RSS motif is identified by RAG1 and 2 proteins. RAG1 and 2 proteins will identify RSS motif and it will bind to them. But then it will break the nicking for double-stranded DNA. And later on, a loop will be lost while V and J will be joined together. Now between V and J, nucleotides will be inserted randomly, which we will talk about in a minute. But before that, Let's discuss together a second mechanism of a somatic recombination. Our uh, mechanism should kind of somehow deletion of hairpin loop. The second mechanism is known as inversion or tangled configuration. And this is easy to understand. An inversion or tangled configuration, I have an RSS motif with the V and the J. This time, notice in the V and the J, they're far from each other, denoted by L2 parallel line, صح? What you can do, you can tangle the DNA. يعني instead of the DNA being linear, you can tangle it. Left for it. This way, the V and the J are close to each other. So what will happen? An inversion will occur. من خلال السوماتيك ريكومبينيشن. A break will happen here, or another break will be here. So originally, the DNA was like this, صح? And it was tangled like this. If you follow it, it looks like this, right? Let me repeat again. Hey, with the five prime, walking towards the three prime. If you break at the RSS using a rag proteins. Now, what you can do, you can walk like this from LV, walk towards LJ, and then continue the walk without losing any of the DNA. There is no deletion, rather the DNA is flipped or inverted. I call it inversion or tangled configuration. Either scenarios, so in this scenario, or a loop formation, eventually will V with J combined together. The enzyme is known as RAG, it identifies the region, and it causes a double-stranded DNA break or cleavage. So this is uh, two segments broken by RAG1 and 2. Actually, there are two RAGs. I do have two RAGs and them affinity for each other, RAG1 and 2. And when they bind to the RSS motif, they, are, they combine together, RAG1 and 2. They try to attract each other, causing the formation of methane hairpin or inversion. Other proteins, they jump in. Minhom, after the RAG, بعد ما RAG, Amyl deletion, for example, a loop, or amyl inversion. Uh, KU70 and 80, 
they will bind to the variable segments VNG. Furthermore, another kinase enzyme, had the enzyme is more DNA protein kinase, exonuclease. There are many different DNA protein kinase exonucleases. Minhum, the Artemis, special one had it. It binds here. So eventually you will have a space, a small space between those two fragments, the VNG. An enzyme is more terminal deoxytransferase, denoted or abbreviated by TDT, like terminal deoxytransferase, will come in, Rahiji, and it will add nucleotides randomly between those two segments, giving rise to the hypervariable region. But afterwards, consequently, I think you know that, in the ligase and another enzyme called XRCC4, they will ligate, created phosphodiester bonds between those fragments. Again, seeing the same thing. So, and the, an enzyme that will cleave the end of the D segment and the end of the J segment, giving rise to this sequence of nucleotides, which is known as palindromic sequence. The palindromic repeat, P sequence, I mean, Furthermore, a terminal deoxytransferase will start adding nucleotides randomly. This random addition of nucleotides will give rise to the three hypervariable regions in the variable segments of the heavy and the light chain. So virtually, or in reality, the number of... I really don't care about the numbers, but the number of the V segments is different between the light and heavy chains as the joining will constant. But if you do the math of combining, choosing one segment of each, or doing the combination through a somatic recombination during the mitosis, and if you fortify that with terminal deoxytransferase, adding random nucleotides in the hypervariable region, a number of different antibodies that will come up with those different proteins is astronomical, billions of, nucle billions of different antibodies. Finally, I just want to remind you, you know, this is the stem cell that is being differentiated to a daughter immature B cell, specifically in the generative tissue, bill bone marrow, where what we talked about today happens in your and my bone marrow, which is written here as antigen receptor gene rearrangement, which was today's topic.